you know, like Vin Diesel's over here and Rock's over there, and that's yeah. all well and good. But like the skinny dude, just kind of like, like whatever, yeah. man. I'll fight you. I'll do whatever you got to do. I, I, and I'm, and I think also he was always trying to get that approval. Yes, from from Vin Diesel, all those guys in there, and I like, I think I'm always trying to get better too. And yeah. while I know I fit in, sometimes I question it, and I want to like get to wherever I can get to, and I want to get the respect of my of my true peers. Yeah, I, I want to have their respect. All right, guys, welcome to True Talk. Got a special guest in the house today, president of our company, Sean Mike. How you doing, man? Awesome, dude. Thanks for coming up. It's good to be here, dude. You came all the way up here to do the True Talk? No. No. <laughs> but if it makes you feel better, I was like, okay. I came all the way up here to do the True Talk. Came up here to do a boatload of work and the True Talk. Love but it. But the True Talk and a boatload of work. Got it. Well, so lately on True Talk, we've really been digging into the agent's kind of background, how they got started in life insurance. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of give your story mm -hmm. since um, you've been in the business about 15 years now. 15 years, yeah. Be 16, um, actually 16 years this month. Wow. 16 years, long time. You've seen this industry evolve, change. Um, when you got into the business, you were working for the state of Connecticut, correct? Correct. And dabbling in some real estate. Yep. What attracted you to get into life insurance at that point? Were you looking to get into life insurance? Yeah, I was never looking to get in life. I didn't know anything about it. What I mean by that, I, I didn't even know how life insurance sales worked. I didn't know if anybody made any money, and nobody ever approached me to sell life insurance, nor did I have life insurance. Okay. So, you know, I was 36 years old. I had a full-time job, a child tech services worker. Um, and, I, you know, I had started to own a lot of real estate, and I got really kind of tired of managing it. Yeah. And I finally found the right guy to manage it. And once that happened, I freed up a lot of my time. So I was looking at a commercial property to buy. Okay. Which really my, I, my job was went, bought it, looked at the numbers, free up and made sense, got my guy to come in. I was like, do this and this and this and this and rent it out. So I was, once I once I started doing that, it was a pretty good, it finally was some passive cash flow. Okay. But it was never really where I, I don't know I really wanted to be. I just knew I had more time to do more things. Got it. You know, so a guy named Jim Godwin, when I was looking at this house on Yantic Street, Norwich, 259 Yantic, never forget it. <laughs> I was buying it from the guy that I guess was the chief of police previously. Okay. And he was selling it, and there was like, it just wasn't a, they had some bad tenants, according to him, and, you know, and it was, they said it was in a bad air, which I didn't think it was, but like, like three months after I bought it, there was a drive-by, and they oh. shot, they dropped like 20 rounds into the my brick building. And then the guy that did the drive-by killed himself two months later. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about here, but that is what <laughs> hey, happened. You know it's what true I mean? talk, bro. Yeah, he died. I mean, he killed, but he overdosed. Nobody killed him. We right, nobody right. killed him for shooting the house. He actually overdosed, like legitimately overdosed. Got it. And, um, but uh, you know, Jim just said to me, he said, "Man, um, are you looking to like make any extra money?" Yeah. And that's all he asked me. And I said, "Well, I'm always looking to make extra money. It depends on what it is." And he said, "You ever thought about selling life insurance?" And I said, "Absolutely not." Mm -hmm. And when I say that. That conversation lasted a minute. That's how long that lasted. Yeah. Jim left. I left. But through real estate, I had to go out there two, three, four, five times. Okay. And finally, Jim said to me, you know, he kind of left it alone. And he said, uh, I really wish you would look at this life insurance thing. And I said, and at this point, I really just wanted to close the house. And I was getting a really good deal. Yeah. And I was, just wanted to be nice to him. So I was like, all right, man, why don't you send me some information? And, um... You know, he sent me the link to get licensed, which I had to pay for. Like, yeah. FFL handles that. We didn't, so I paid for it. And I looked into it, and I was like, you know what? Like, I was at home. Kids are sleeping. You know, I've been sober for a long time. So yeah. when you're sober at 8, 9 o'clock, kids are in bed, you're kind of like, I don't know, dude. I can do something. You know right. what I mean? I didn't watch a lot of TV at all. So I was just kind of like... You know, they were there, so I wasn't going to, like, go to the gym or do something else. I was present, too. They were sleeping. Yeah. And uh, I went into the I, – I I jumped on the computer. Now, to be really honest, I have not told this story much, but some, the, I don't know if you remember this or not. The exam FX thing back then, like, it, like, you just went through it real fast. Right. Like, literally, they ended up revamping it where, like, you could just submit – like, you had to still take the state exam. Correct. But the online course, you went through it, like, in, a, like, hours. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, wow, I went through it. And then they changed with the way you answer the question. We could just like kind of hit check, submit, kind of helped us through it the way, I don't know if that's the way they intended to be or not. 
So literally, like in two nights, I was done. Yeah. And then I was like, I mean, still no desire to do anything other than I got some information. I, I burnt four hours a night, eight hours. Cool. I'll go take the exam. Yeah. I take the exam. I walk in literally and I'm like, I, I, you go to a room and it was like, I'm sure it's not like this now after COVID, but there was like 20 of us all on the computers right next to each other. And there was a proctor and my first like 12 questions were health insurance questions. Yeah. <laughs> so I raised my hand and she came over and she's like, can I help you? I said, Hey, this is the wrong test. <laughs> and she said, no, it's not. I said, no, no, the, I, this is, I don't, this is for, I want life insurance. And she said, no, this is a life and health insurance exam. Like that's why I said, yeah, I just want the life stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't work that way. So complete, no BS. I just was like, all right, let me get through it. Yeah. The lady out front was like 90 years old. She was super nice. And I'm like, I'm just going to go out there and reschedule. Like, I'm, I know you can keep taking it. And I literally told her, she laughed. She goes, how'd you do? And I go, oh, I'm just going to do a new date. She printed out, I got a 70. You need a 70 pass, got a nice. 70. <laughs> and, um. I was like, all right. And I still really didn't know what the process was, yeah. but I'm a, but I'm a, a, like, I'm a systems guy. I'm like, okay, how do I get my license? I apply at the state. I drove over, like waited to have my thing, drove over to state, applied in person. And Jim, I was, we were getting ready to close the house. I went my final walkthrough and I said, Hey man, I got my license. And he was like, what do you mean? I go, yeah. It, it so you hadn't thing. talked to him since we hadn't about spoke, license. We hadn't spoken at all. <laughs> I said, I got my license. And he's like, like literally goes, what do you mean? I said, my insurance license. He said, you already got it. I said, yeah, I got it. Like I got it right here. Yeah. I give it to you. I got my license. And he went to the trunk of his car and he said, all right, I want to show you something. And he handed me a lead. I'd never seen a lead, not in life insurance and yeah. real estate leads weren't any good. And I was like, what, how, what is this? And he's like, this is what we get. We call the people up and we sell mortgage protection, which is term insurance return to premium. And I said, how many of them do you have? He's like, well, we can get a lot of them. And I literally, at that moment, like call the guy didn't like wasn't contract and he was fully licensed and, and booked an appointment. And I literally, nobody gave me a phone script. I just personally answered the phone. I said, you know, Mike, which seemed normal to me. I was like, I'm, and I was literally like, I'm like, where am I calling from? Then I get back and tell him. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I was really intrigued. Got my license. Uh, that following weekend, I, I worked for the state third shift Monday through Friday, got to work Saturday morning at 8 AM drove back down to Preston and went to the park where like the baseball softball fields yeah. are. Cause I'm like, the kids are running crazy and I just had to get like, so I'm going to watch kids. I just can't do it in the house. And I started down the phone and I booked probably seven, eight appointments. what did you think? Cause you said you had leads in real estate, but not like this, right? The leads in real estate were awful. Like if you called real estate leads, 10 of them, how many did you set something up with? I'd set it up with a lot of them because okay. I was really good and I would never, I never, st I never gave in, but most of those people were not looking to buy a house Got it. or sell a house. So I could get them to meet with me, but it was okay. like, they had went and Googled whatever, something. And they're like, dude, I'm not like, they're living in an apartment. They're not looking to buy anything. <laughs> right. But I was, I was confusing activity with profitability. Gotcha. My peers weren't booking any appointments. Yeah. So I was like, I was excited at first. I'm like, oh, this is great. And then I was like realizing they could click on home warranty. Yeah home invasion, home system, like, and that would became a real estate. It was, there were leads were awful. So I wasn't really, when I saw the lead, I was like, but I, but you know, what's funny, Mike is I'm always a, like, I can figure it out kind of guy. Yeah. Always. I've always been that way. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. And, and if you stay around me long enough, you might start thinking that way too. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like I'd argue that when I met you, you weren't that way. You're a super great guy, super smart, but I think it was like you could find the reasons things wouldn't work. A lot of us can. Sure. And then it was like, wait a minute. No, I'm really smart. Yes, you are. Man, I can. Yes, you can. I can do more. Most, yes, you can. I can have this. Yes, you can. I can have an Yes, I can. My kids can have. Yes, they can. Right. And once you start doing that. So I, I've been like that since I was like way too young. And I, and I wasn't having any result, but that's how I was. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm driving my Dodge Omni that don't run. It's $400 <laughs> car. But I'm convincing myself that like I got it figured out. I got yeah. my my stickers in the windshield. I thought that was cool in the back of the car. Um, you know, I got a little stereo system. And I'm like, I'm, I just... I knew that even though the real estate leads I had weren't good, people were making money in sales. Right. You know, so when I I, I, I when I called those leads, it was I, I was really validated that I'm like, and dude, I spent here's the thing people don't understand. I spent a thousand dollars on those leads. I never dialed anything. Mm. And Jim was like, Why are you why are you spending a thousand? And you might go like, well, you had money. No, dude, I was working the state. I have a lot of bills. The real estate, I was buying as much as I, so every time right. I made money, I was buying a new property. Yeah. I didn't have cash flow. 
like I was going from two properties to damn when I sold the whole thing. It was hundreds. Right. So, you know, that Yandick building cost me $270,000. I like to put 20% down minimally with the guy I was doing the financing with. So they gave me a better rate. Then you had closing costs, whatever else, get people in, work you had to do to it, another mm -hmm. 30 Gs to put into it to make it look good. So I was always money coming in, money going out. Got it. That thousand bucks was a big deal to me. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, why did you I spend it? What, like, did you believe that much in what you saw already or believe that much in yourself? Growing up, I watched a lot of people around me um my immediate friends and family didn't have any money yeah. but i was very blessed to be good enough athletically where people wanted me to play in their teams baseball football mm -hmm. basketball which i thought i sucked at but i was like man you guys are all really uncoordinated because they wanted me to play <laughs> and my high school's coach was like you need to play basketball i'm like in high school i hate basketball and i'm like i'm playing and i'm like dude you guys suck <laughs> like i'm bad and how am i playing I'm like you guys are awful and um you know, but I got to be around a lot of, and a lot of the men I met were successful coaches. Okay. Or successful, I'm sorry, businessmen that were coaching. Got they had it. been former athletes, whether they played professionally in college or whatever. But I was, like, always asking them questions. And I just watched. Sometimes I, I just watched. And if they were talking yeah. about business, like, I was watching. If we were at practice and John Ellis was talking about baseball, okay, he played in the big leagues. Fine. Dude, I didn't think I was going to play in the big leagues 14 years. Yeah. But when he was talking about business, I was like... Like I'm listening. So you kind of by accident got like a business education. Yeah. I got around people that were doing well yeah. in business. My football coach did well in business. I had some basketball guy, a wrestling coach. I never wrestled. But I'd always be like, <laughs> I can beat the shut all the guys in the wrestling team. And I got became friends with him. Yeah. And they all had like a business outside of, you know, and some of the guys just, they weren't coaches in high school. They were just coaches, you know, on the outside. And they had very successful businesses. Right. And I was looking for that void in my life. I didn't have that. Yeah. I didn't have anybody speaking that into my life. Got it. So you get these leads for the first time. Different result from down on real estate leads. Different result when I went out there. When you went out there. So when they you, were buying policies. So day one, you're like, I'm booking appointments. This is what I normally do. And then you go out there and run appointments for the first time. But on the way to their houses, I believe that was going to sell no matter what. I okay. didn't go, well, I made the appointments, but in real estate, they didn't buy sometimes. And I was just like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm jacked up. Yeah. I remember I called Jim. We had one carrier at the time. I had one carrier. The company had a bunch. He only gave me one carrier. And, and I didn't know anything. I didn't yeah. know what to ask. I was just like, boom. And um, and I remember the very first person said, why do you think I need this? I said, well, because I decided to join the life insurance industry because it's the only product that I, you're guaranteed to use because every single person dies. So I wanted to sell something that everybody would use. I don't want to sell anything that people may not use. And he was like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> and I was just like, and I started selling. I think I wrote 14 applications in two days. Yeah. You know, and I didn't. You know, I didn't know anything about comp or how it worked, and right. I didn't know how low my comp was the company I was at, which neither here nor there. But I got paid. Yeah. And when I got paid like three, four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, I was like, damn. And I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Right. And then the guys around me don't seem to know what they're doing. And it, it, it was it went really fast. Were you doing more than the people around you that recruited you? Oh yeah, dude. I, yeah. And the thing with me, and I remember I was in a meeting at the. Um, that one by the DMV, the is that the Holiday Inn in Norwich? Oh, the yeah. Hotel? Yep. And the guy that hired me, Jim, got hired by a guy named Jay. And um, I remember I had gone to, right after I started, they wanted me to go to Syracuse, New York. Yeah. And I went, Jay, Jay had a nice house. He had done some network marketing or something. So I was like, wow, it's like a pretty nice house. Like, you must do really well. And then, um, but on the way up to the meet, I was like, God, it was a long way. And then we, they, the, we had a flat tire on the way back. I remember this, this story. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's when I knew they were not. I couldn't be hanging around with them because Jim was like, well, I can't get into the, I, I, you know, I, I, he, first of all, couldn't get into his trunk. So I broke his trunk open. Um, and then he said he didn't have the lock for the lug nuts. Yeah. And I'm like, well, we'll just get the tire iron and bang that motherfucker. Like, we'll snap, right. we'll strip him. <laughs> sure. And, oh, he was about in tears. But I changed the tire because I guess he didn't know how to change a tire. And um, they didn't do anything. And I was doing a meeting at a Holiday Inn, and there was about 60 people. I wasn't doing that. I was just at the meeting. And there was a guy that, I guess, like, actually the guy that was running the company at the time, and he was like, who's your upline? And I'm like, well, what, do you, who, what do you mean? What's that mean? He's the guy I hired you. I'm like, that guy, Jim, right there. And he said, who hired him? I said, the guy, Jay, behind him. He said, they've been helpful. You know, I was like, no, they don't do anything. And the guys laughed. I go, no, they don't do anything. And he goes, well, how'd you learn? I go, not from them. They don't do anything. I don't yeah. even think they work here. So he said, well, well, what do you think about that? I go, I don't think anything of it. I just think that, that I just found other people to get advice from. And he said, you know, they make an override when you sell. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, that's how, like, you you might go, like, come on, you knew. No, I didn't, dude. So you didn't know about how the recruiting or I any didn't of that know worked. anything other than get your license and here are the leads. Yeah. 
and here's the one carrier you have. You understand, do they want carrier portals? Right. These were paper apps. Yep. I got handed 15 page paper apps. It was green and white, fidelity and guarantee. Mm -hmm. You pull them out. They like, you know, they kind of perforate. You can cut them out. I knew, and I'm not dumb, so I know how to fill out an application. All I right. got to do is ask the questions and get the truth out of people and tell the truth. That seemed easy. Get them to sign everything. I come back to the office. I would fax in those apps. I, that's what I knew. I didn't know what yeah. I was being paid. I didn't even know how to check my pending business at the time. I didn't know about overrides. I didn't know about recruiting. Jib didn't teach. All he said was you can make some extra money. Got it. Which he was right about. So how long did you sell before you started actually recruiting? You know, weirdly, Mike, I, I got excited about recruiting because I wanted my friends to get paid in sales. I, yeah. I didn't even, like, ever draw out groups or be like, well, I'm going to be at this level or that level, the whole deal. I literally was just excited about my friends making money. Got it. So I started calling friends of mine that I knew could use the help. Yeah. Right? Um, and I did a lot of that. Matter of fact, my, I didn't really start. When I say I started recruiting, I hired a guy named Gordon, and I knew he didn't need the money. Yeah. That's when I was like, wait a minute. I'm already getting paid in the overrides. They're making money. This is really cool. And then I went to Gordon, who was, is, I think, still an attorney full time. It was already making money and doing well. And I was like, you should do this. He's like, I'm never going to sell any insurance. I said, no, but you know everybody you recruit mm -hmm. well. I'll train them. Let's do that. Yeah. And then it started to explode. Got you it. know, I knew he's a better recruiter than me. I knew he knew more people than me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'd been he'd he'd been a, a professional longer than me. Like I just knew he he would be good. And that's when I finally started to realize, like that's when I started drawing teams out, like Got looking it. at spreads and how that works and what you make and all those kind of things. But yeah. but before that, I really talked to people like just about them making money. Right. And even when I met people subsequent to that, like I was excited about you joining us because I'm like, I like him and I'd like him to make money. Yeah. And one of the things that's been a driving force in my life, honestly, for a long time is wanting to see people that maybe have counted themselves out or put their own lid on mm -hmm. what they thought they could make and kind of going, why did they get to do it? And we can't. Right. Like, why can't we do it? Yeah. And we could be anybody. Does anybody sure. that didn't believe in themselves? Right. Well, I mean, you mentioned me. You you met my wife first mm -hmm. at a bank. Tried to recruit her from the Tried bank. Tried to recruit her. I think she made a comment one day because you did your banking there back when you were in real estate. Then mm -hmm. you're in insurance. And she's like, how do you got money in your account now? Because yeah. she don't care. No, no filter. No. And then you had approached her about it, asked her a few times. Yep. And then I remember, I remember she told me about it and I'm like, dude, I was in construction. I'm like, cool. Hey, do whatever you want. She's like, I'm going to go to this meeting, check it out. And one of her coworkers was supposed to go with her. She canceled mm -hmm. and Christina dragged me to this meeting. I had right. no intention. I, mo I was dressed like this. Most mm -hmm. people there, actually you were, un you're underdressed now for how most people were in that meeting. No doubt. There was, was probably a hundred people, yep. suit, tie. And I'm like, Holy I had my grandpa's shit. suit on. It looked yep. like it was. It wasn't his, <laughs> yeah. but I cheat, Dude, I didn't cheat. know any better. I'm like, dude, these guys look so <laughs> You know, the funny thing is last time we went to a meeting like that, it was one of these network marketing deals. And it was a guy from the South and they were trying to sell us pots and pans. Mm -hmm. So the guy that gets up to introduce you is from the South. And I'm like, oh shit, here we go here again. We go. <laughs> but then you got up, you spoke, you said a few things that really, I mean, you talked about the pay, sure. But you talked about helping people. And I'm like, I'm, I was 20 at the time, I think, 21. And I'm like, I've never heard anyone get up and, like, almost brag about helping people. Mm -hmm. You always, you know, people making money, it's usually they're trying to get over on someone or look yeah. at how much we can make. You didn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Then you said you talked about your kids. We didn't have kids at the time, but we helped raise, you know, our nephews, sisters, or whatnot. You said that I would do anything for my kids unless it puts me in jail or hell. Yep. And I was like, wow. I could follow somebody like that. Yep. And then we met afterwards and I asked, cause I didn't know anything, dude. I'm like, is this just for her or me? And you're like, dude, yeah, I didn't say that. you were yeah. like, anyone can do it. If they are willing to work, Correct. willing to change, willing to grow. You see, you have to change something. I had like an eyebrow piercing. Like Eminem and m throw yes. up. Yeah. You gave me your card. This was May of 09. And then I got back to work. Business picked up. It, dude, it sat on my desk for months. My Vista print card. Yep. Your Vista like print card. bucks for a couple. Absolutely. Um, but, the reason I bring that up, dude, is I've seen you do this. Like you said, you always look for people that, you know, may have counted themselves out, may not believe it. You talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. We've been in restaurants. You're recruiting people, valet drive. Like everybody. Everybody. And it's never out of a sense of desperation. Like you've asked my wife several times, but it ne never was like, you know, please do it. You'll be great. No, I asked her because she's working in the bank. I didn't like the bank. Right. I didn't think any money. money. I would ask people to like, how much you make? Yep. And they would tell me made an hour. I'm like, dude, you got to get out of here. Like the manager, I'd be like, yo, get out of here. You got to quit this place. Right. <laughs> like seriously. Yep. I asked her because I'm like, dude, she was really forthright. I liked that. She was direct. I liked that. 
She's bilingual. Yeah. I like that. And she just overall seemed like a good person. So my me continue to ask her two, three, four. Like when I look at Jim, and I'm not mad at Jim. I mean, good for him. He got me in the insurance business. Yeah. So but Jim wanted me to join to make an override, which Correct. is fine. I, and like he was continuing. He's very it was very much like you need to get over. It wasn't, you know, you yeah. make so much so you kept doing his thing. And I've always recruited based on this will be better than you than it is for better for you than it is for mm -hmm. me. You know, you're gonna make the majority of what you sell. And what I make, I sure as hell will earn, but I'm going to make a little bit on a lot. But right. this is going to be better for you one-on-one -on -one than, than, than it impacts me as a person. Yeah. And, and, dude, I learned that early on because unlike a lot of people, you ask very direct questions. Like, dude, I talk to people now. They've had a guy in their team for two years. They don't yeah. know their kids' names. That's they don't know sad. where they were. They don't know how much money they made yeah, before. They don't, they don't care. Dude, like one, one of our first conversations was, well, how much money are you making now? How much do you need to make to leave that job? And then when can we make that happen? Mm -hmm. And I remember, dude, you'd call me every Friday because back then we didn't have daily pay. Yo. And you'd ask, how much you get paid this week? And if it wasn't over a certain amount, why not? Let's fix that. Correct. Um, but, but I always felt that it, like to your point, it came from a sense of what I could do, not what I could do for you. Correct. You always said that you don't work for me. We work together. We, yep. I work with you. Work with you. Um, but from a recruiting standpoint, dude, Talk to me about the, that psychology of, because I, I think a lot of people still do it the wrong way, right? We we went through this phase of like where, hey, anyone can do this. And then Correct. we get people in that it's not a good fit for. And you never did that, but you it's like, it almost sounds like I'm talking out of both ends. You never did that, but yet you talk to everybody. W what's the psychology behind psychology the Psychology is that I do think that anybody has the opportunity to be good at this. Yeah. But I also, if you watched me over all these years, I didn't recruit people I didn't like. Right. They might have been recruited to the business, then I didn't work with people I didn't like. Right. I'm not mad at them. I just don't like them. What makes them not like them? When they're, not, when they're unaccountable, when they're egotistical, when they blame people for other things, when they're disrespectful and rude to people, and we're just an outright ass. Right. So for me, one of the things I learned early in the business, which I realized I was watching my peers, and I'm like, and one day I said in the meeting, you guys are upset with your clients because you spend too much time with them and they're saying no. Mm. I, I'm, I, I'm, if I sit in there for an hour and you continue to tell me to say no, that's just weird. So my, my, my rejection is five, six, seven minutes, and I'm a big boy. I'm gone. Right. Like I'm out. But you guys belabor this thing. You go on and on and on and on. You sit there for an hour and not get a check, not get banking information. They didn't get insured. They die. They're screwed. And you didn't make any money. Right. So why are we not? And I was the same way with people when I worked with them. Mike, had you not, I didn't bother you when you didn't call me when my car was in your desk. I just was here for you, dude. I care about you. I want to see you win. I'll do anything. So, and I also, when you talk about that, you know, it's funny because I never had anybody do that for me. Mm. So you would think you're like, oh man, somebody didn't know. Nobody ever did. Right. Nobody. And I'm not being mean. I'm just like the people that are around me were, were not bad people, but they used me for what they could get out of me. Then I was done. Yeah. And I was, that they, they were very transactional, you know, he'll be good. He can play on my team for two years. So shit, he wants to listen to my business conversation, ask me questions, sleep over my house to hang out with my kid. But once they go off to different places, I'm not like my son's not going to be friends with him. Right. You know, I was a kid from, you know, the wrong side of the town, you know, single mom broke his shit. So I was cool with that. So I'm, I wasn't like bitter, like, oh my God, I'm like, when I get older and I become successful, which I will, I will pour into people best I can. Mm. I will. And I always will. And I think that's what people just don't get. Like they just, you know, like when you start looking at someone, why do you do that? I'm like, dude, why not? Like it helps people. Like who cares? Like right. what do you care? And, and I think for me, but when you look at when we started, dude, I, we like the people we worked with, right. you know, and did it mean they were perfect? Oh God, no! It was like the land of the misfits. Right. But we, they were good people. They were you not. You always say like they're misfits, but there are misfits. You better believe it. Like he's, I, 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 and I would say he's an idiot, but he's already. I'm an idiot, and I'm your idiot. Yep. Like we're on the same team, and I think, I think for me that's been very, very empowering, and um, that's how I've been able to I think build a really big business is do the best you can. Mm -hmm. It's never as good as you think it is. Never as bad as you think it is. Um, I, I, rec I do when I, when I see people, you know, I was joking the other day cause I'm at the, the valet and at uh capital grill. So whoever runs out valet and capital grill in Boca, I apologize to, but I recruit everybody that parks cars there yep. and, but they're always like new. And every time they park my car, I'm like, dude, what's your biggest tip? Mm. 
you know, I went to the, a Mohegan Sun, checked in, and I said, what's the biggest? The dude been working there eight hours today. Eight hours yesterday, rather. Eight hours. His cumulative tips are 18 bucks in eight hours. Oh, my God. So I give him 100 bucks, and he loses his God bless his mind like I gave him $27 yeah. million. Dollars. And I said, dude, let me help you. Right. I mean, you put in eight hours at not a good wage because a lot of it's supposed to be tips to make 18 bucks. I said, that's a lot of, and he's like, yeah, one and $2 tips. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it hurts me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, now it doesn't mean he'll do it. I've been recruiting people there forever and I, they know them all. Right. So I'm like, Hey dude, there's people been parking my car there for 15 years mm -hmm. that ain't going to go nowhere, but it's okay. They don't have to, I'm doing And also I don't like, I never liked when people look down on me. I don't look down on anybody. Right. I'm eye to eye with you. I I will tell you if I'm out working you. I will tell you if I want more. I will tell you if I'm going to do more for my kids. I have no problem saying that, but I'm not above anybody and I'm not below anybody either. Right. I don't give a shit if, if Elon Musk walks in here, he ain't above me. Number one, I can kick the shit out of him. So he's not above me. Yep. Number two, who cares how much money he has? It doesn't matter. Right. He's not above me and I'm not above anybody. And I think that's the struggle for people is I, I when you recruit and people think they feel like you th they think you think you're better than them. You just continue to validate the 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 questioning they have of themselves mm -hmm. or the disbelief they have in themselves. That yeah. kind of stuff. We were at a different company, and I remember the the um, I don't know what you want to call, it, but uh, people from other groups would say things to us like, "I can't believe you work with Sean. Like he's always yelling. He's always he's always this. He's always that." But they saw the outside and. One of the things, like, nobody's perfect. We all have our mm -hmm. shit. But one of the reasons why me, myself, and everyone around us followed you is you would never ask us to do anything that you weren't willing to do. And never. that was huge. Ever. Like, the amount, whatever. I mean, appointments you're going to run, what time you're going to run appointments, what time you're going to be at the office. It's like, you, you. I remember you calling me at the end of the night, 11 o'clock. Where are you going? I'm heading my last, I'm leaving my last appointment. Meet me at the office. We're going to scrub apps. Yep. You were there till midnight, 1 o'clock. Like you, you would all, whatever you expected out of us, you would demonstrate and do first. Correct. Um, we left that company 2013, yep. started this. I, I don't know if you remember this, but we were running appointments, same area. You called me, you had double booked an appointment mm -hmm. and you're I like, remember. meet me. And we're just standing in the middle of the street up in Willimantic talking. And you go, I'm thinking about quitting. And I was like, thank God, dude, because I've been thinking about quitting a long time. I just didn't know how to tell you. I didn't want to quit you. To be yeah. honest. I wanted to quit the company Correct. a freaking year prior to that. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, this is probably the best news I've heard in a long time. And, you know, we left. And, dude, that first year was insane, right? Yeah. We'll write, maybe was, one day we'll write a book it about a it. It was a battle. Um, no doubt. At <laughs> what point, or did you always know, Is I've never asked you this, did you always know that was the right decision? 100%. Why? Because I knew that the place that I was at wasn't best for the people that I was in business with. Mm. I wasn't, matter of fact, you bring up like Dominique, it was, it was a, a Dominique calling me and saying, hey, you know, this is happening, this is happening, that's yep. happening. I'm beating my head against the wall. You know, my, my comp is like nothing. I can't get this. The fees are so much every month. I can't keep up. And, you know, and it wasn't like he had another, he didn't he didn't have any solution. He's like, right. just really frustrated. Yeah. And then I was hearing that over and over again. And what bothered me was I was going to make money either way. Right. And what I mean by that is I was dumb enough to beat my head against the wall 80 hours a week mm -hmm. to make whatever I was going to make in money. Sure. But I, I really started thinking about, dude, if we're going to be in business together, I got to find the best place for the people I work with too. Because when you start hiring somebody, dude, you give up your right to, you lead anybody in anything. You have a kid, your coach, your parent, your teacher, you give up your right to be average and ordinary right? because you're now responsible for somebody else in some capacity. When I was a social worker and I'm at somebody's house protecting their kids, I can't be average and ordinary. Right. I did better than that because those kids could get hurt, like severely hurt. So, you know, I knew, and, and it's funny, and I, and I always knew we'd make it. Yeah. That's the other thing, you know, like I would always joke around, you know, like, how do you think? I'm like, I don't know, 70, 20, 70, 30, 80, 20, <laughs> hell, 70, 20, 10. I don't know. No. But we would like, we would joke, but I always knew we'd make it. Yeah. But I, I you know, cause I couldn't envision being alive and not making it. Right. And I think with all of us around you had that same feeling. Like I couldn't imagine doing anything else at that time. Right. So the thought, like, even though when you look back, like there were some weeks where maybe we were close to not making it. Correct. But it was weird. There was just this sense of 
we're going to get there. We're going to figure this thing out. Correct. There's no other option. Correct. You know, um, you know, we're in the life insurance business. One of the biggest um, pieces of the business for me is the death claim, right? Like that, mm -hmm. for me, it didn't become real until I had my first Correct. one. It, I know you had plenty. Is there one that sticks out? Is it your first one? And dude, my, my, my first one sticks out. Yeah. You know, um, my fir first one sticks out because it was, you know, in Warregan. I yep. mean, it's closer to our old office than this one is. Um, Lisa, I'll never forget, answered the door. Um, and before I could even say anything, she just said, I have, you know, she had cancer. She was, didn't have a long time to live. Gave me the details. She said, I filled that out. And pretty much everybody's told me they can't help me. Mm. I said, um, the only thing I could offer you would be a policy where you'd have to live for two years before it would pay you. It'd be a graded policy. She said, there's no chance I live for two years. Wow. I, I didn't know what to say. She in her 30s. A couple kids. Husband comes around the corner. You talk about, like, God is great. He wasn't supposed to be there. He was supposed to be at work. Mm. Um, he's late to work. I was door knocking. Like, I didn't have an appointment with her. Yeah. I just showed up. Or she, I called her. She never answered. And he says, you know, he's cussing me out. He's pretty upset. And I'm, you know, do pretty well when people are upset. It's kind of like when guys are up. I'm like, dude, like, it'll be okay. Like, you know, make them, you know, make them feel good and stroke them a little bit with me. And, you know, you're terrifying me and everybody else. And he's a big boy with his, you know, sleeveless shirt. And, <laughs> and, uh, but just a good dude, man. And you know, always try to think about when people are in a bad mood, like wife's dying, got two kids, going to work. How stressful is that? You know? Right. So we, she's, she invites me in because we haven't been inside yet. And he's like, I go to work in a minute. And basically, I said, you know, hey, why don't you get life? And he lost it again on me. And I actually, she sold it. I used but she sold it. I mean, that was, I just started talking about her. And he said a big work policy. Long story short, I wrote him a $250,000 policy. He wanted to push a future draft today. So I'm not able to do that because I won't. If you, I don't know when you're going to die. I don't right. do that. So you want the policy, you get it. You, you don't have to get it with me if you don't want to. But I'm, I'm going to get it where you're an adult. You're going to pay it every month. Your family needs this. And if something happens mm -hmm. to you. And two days later, I had a staff member who came to me crying because we didn't have a lot of, I mean, we had policies, but because she had seen the guy's name. Yeah. And he died in a motorcycle accident two days after I wrote him. Wow. And policy paid 250 grand to her. She's a beneficiary. And then um, I remember it was, I think, I want to say it was her sister. Raised, she died, you yeah. know, a while after that. But those kids had, his work policy was $5,000. Wow. So that one stuck out because I've had a lot. I'm going to say a lot. I've had plenty, sure. you know. Um over 15 years and I wrote a lot of policies yeah but that one because it became real yeah I mean the other ones afterwards were like I, I they were still as impactful as far as man I felt for the family and I think also that he was so young yeah I think that he I've got younger death. than you at the time right yeah dude yeah. I mean I was 36 my man was like 32 wow and it was like during the day, it wasn't, you know, partying at two o'clock in the morning it was yeah. like a deer run out and he laid the bike down to get around and hit his head and died wow and um I'll just never, because I left there never thinking that that would happen. Yeah. You know, I've written people that are older, and, you know, five years later, I'm like, okay, like, you know, like, I'm not, I wish they lived forever, but okay, sure. like, he had some health stuff going on. We told the truth in every question, but, right. you know, now he was 81 years of age, and he died. Right. Okay, but, yeah, and especially that close to it. Two days. Yeah. I've never experienced anything like that before. Wow. Well, Sean, I'd like to wrap up with some fun stuff and nothing to do with life insurance. So I'm going to throw a couple questions at Fire you. Away. All right. So you mentioned Elon Musk. He yes. wants to move us all to the moon or Mars at some point, right? Let's say we're moving and he says, Sean, you can only bring one movie with you to watch for the rest of your life. What's oh, that movie going to be? Yeah, I told you. I'm whoop his ass and get three <laughs> Well, you whoop his ass and then bring the movie. All right. <laughs> um, the Town. The Town? Okay. Sorry. I just, uh, right. there's 19 in my head, but The Town goes with me. Uh, if I was a bet man, I, I would assume that you would. Yes, Tombstone. Yes, tomb, the Tombstone's in there. Tombstone, the town. Remember the Titans. There you go. Friday Night Lights. Those are all kicking around in there. Um, the Departed. That's a good one. Yeah, but I if I have to take one because I can watch that on loop. Really? Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. Just there's something about it. I can yeah. watch that one over and over. I love again. that part, and I know you know what I'm talking about. That's it, bro. <laughs> Whose car? Whose car we taking? taking? Um, that's, but that's my, how it was. You better believe it, bro. I'm always down for my friends. Last one, and I think I know your answer to this one. It if might you be wrong. Be You're over any, one. yeah, I am over one. Any fictional character in history, who would you be, and why? Wait a minute. Any fictional character, yep. like any yep. movie, cartoon anywhere. guy, movie, anything, anyone. Oh my god! Who would you pick, and why? <sighs> These are the hard questions, Sean. I know the other ones are really easy. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
Dude, here's I'm, I'm gonna give you two. I have to. Okay. Okay. Like I always say, my favorite superhero was like Robin Hood. That's what I thought okay? you were gonna pick. I want to. I want to take and give to people. You know what I mean? I really do. And um, but I was watching. My son got me to watch a movie the other day. And I'm gonna forget the name of it now. But the mo- the characters Paul Walker played in his movies. Okay. Fast and Furious movies because I watched like the dude was skinny and fu- and obviously you know I I don't look like Paul Walker. I know that part, believe me. He's like one of the best looking <laughs> dudes ever walked face of the earth in a very heterosexual way. But he was just always like in a good mood, man. Yeah. Smiling, laughing, taking shit on, wasn't wasn't scared of stuff. Yep. Did what he did. And the movie we were watching it was some, I can't remember what it was, like a heist movie or something, but everything he's been in. So I watched those Fast and the Furious movies and I was like, you know, like Ben Diesel's over here and Rock's over there and that's yep. all well and good. But like the skinny dude just kind of like, like whatever, yeah. man, I'll fight you, I'll do whatever you got to do. I, I, and, I'm, and I think also he was always trying to get that approval. Yes. From from Vin Diesel, all those guys in there. And I like, I think I'm always trying to get better too. And yeah. while I know I fit in, sometimes I question it and I want to like get to wherever I can get to. And I want to get the respect of my, of my true peers. Yeah. I, I want to have their respect. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Nice. Well, dude, I appreciate you coming. Appreciate up doing you, this. I appreciate you. It's a blast. Absolutely. Next Spend time I'll do all those questions. That'll be, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, well, we got more, dude. Let's get more for next time. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Love it. Yep. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Thank Thanks you, for checking us out. You know where to find us every week on True Talk. We'll see you soon.